You know, we've established the fact that, that chromosome number in sexual reproduction is going to be a big time problem. If, if again, using humans as, as an example, we somehow have to figure out a way to get this 46 chromosome thing and work it out so that somehow we can form gametes, whether they're sperm or eggs, with 23 chromosomes in it each. Because no human I know is going to do well with 92 chromosomes. Um, and so, so, so we have this dilemma, and the l dilemma is we need a process to make gametes. And so how are we going to come up with that process? Well, I've already told you the name of the process. The name of the process is going to be meiosis, but there's more to that than meets the eye. Now, I'm going to do a little meiosis action with you here, and I'm going to let you <clears throat> take a look and see if you can figure out what the problem is. And now I'm going to do a simple organism. And let's say that this is an organism with a mere two chromosomes, okay? And this is its somatic state, okay? What's that mean? Somatic state, it's body cell, all right? So we'll draw, let's curve this up so I get more room. If I can fit this all on one page, I'm going to be a very happy boy. Okay, so, so we have, let's see, we got, we got a cell here. And we'll make this mom. And we're going to cross her with dad. Okay, so he's got his two chromosomes, and here's dad. He's a little irregular. Okay, okay, so, so dad here and mom, and they both have one, two, three, two chromosomes each. And you guys know that, that the idea of this whole thing is to separate chromosomes. Now, I've kept these chromosomes doubled, and I'm going to work through them doubled. We'll see all the whole story of meiosis later on, but right now I want to think about a sorting or sorting these chromosomes. Now, what did I say I was going to do? I said I was going to come up with a way to, to make sure that baby has, and we're going to put baby over here. We want the little bambino over here to have two chromosomes. Why? Because we want it to be normal. And so we want, since the mother of this species has two, and the father of this species has two, all offspring should have two. So we're going to do a meiotic process here. So mom's going to split her cells. And, you know, for those of you who know a little bit about meiosis, realize I've, I'm, I'm, I'm greatly simplifying this. But that's okay because we, we have to show the problem here. So we're going to have mom put her chromosome right in there. And it's not allowed to stick out, but it is. And we'll put this chromosome here, okay? And then we'll have dad do the same thing here. All right, so we'll let the chromosomes hang out. There we go. All right. There we go. Now, we got to make sure we understand that this is dad's sperm. And here's the thing. I want to go back. Remember how I had this? Red and yellow. That was not random. Let's say, for example, that this chromosome has a gene on it. This is a very simple organism. All right? And this chromosome has a gene on it to, say grow a head. And this chromosome has a gene on it to grow a body. Well, this is good because mom, me, that means she's got a body and a head. And dad had the same thing, a body and a head. So we're going to do this. We split them. Remember, we got to get down one from each parent. I mean, that's the key here. And so this is good. This sperm can fertilize the egg. And look what we got. We have a normal baby. This sperm gave its chromosome to that egg. See, they're empty, okay? And you have this baby, and life is good. We have a gene for making a body and a gene for making a head. But I have a question for you. See anything wrong with this scenario? I do. Because sperm just swim, and eggs just get fertilized. And I have a question for you. Could this sperm have fertilized this egg? We have a bodiless head. You see, we ended up with two genes for making a head, but none for making a body and vice versa. We have a headless body. <laughs> you get it. 
I hope you get it. This is a problem. And so we come to the second central problem of meiosis. What is that problem? How are we going to sort chromosomes? And so in summary, let me just say this. As we approach the study of meiosis, there are two dilemmas I'm going to pose to you. Number one. Problem number one is this. How to divide chromosomes by number. In other words, go from 2n to n. And the second dilemma I want to pose to you is this. How to sort chromosomes I'm going to lay part of the answer on you right now. I think what you guys realize by now is that the situation I gave you couldn't happen. You, it wouldn't work because of the fact that sperm and eggs will have no minds as to what chromosomes they carry. So here's an inkling of where we're going. It shouldn't be a major intuitive leap to realize that we really don't have 46 chromosomes. Instead, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Think of this. If I say to you we have 23 pairs of chromosomes, now what do we know? We now know that in order to get a normal egg, if we can merely make sure that there are that the 23 that go to one side are paired members to the 23 that go, say, to this side, then we will make sure that our gametes will have not just 23 chromosomes, but 23 unrelated chromosomes. But guess what? This is sex. And if this is an egg, what is the male going to carry? Yes, the other members of the pair. We call those homologous chromosomes. And homologous chromosomes are the secret to the proper running of meiosis.